Mr. Jake Smith, welcome to Linear Rock. Hello, thank you for having me. <laughs> Great to have you. So we were saying that, you know, On the Widow's Walk is about to come out for the second time in a new version, brand new version. So seventh album, which was released during the pandemic two years ago. Um, and now the deluxe edition has bonus tracks and is coming right uh, before the tour uh, is getting back. You're getting back on the road. Um, the road that will lead you to Milan as well on May 2nd, and we cannot wait to see you back on stage. Um, so it feels like this album is crucial to you in a sense, um, with its good balance, you know, between slow songs and rockers. And you didn't want to lose, uh, to lose it in a sense, in, you know, in a period which was very particular and lasted so long, forced, <laughs> relaxed at home. So is that the reason why, I mean, you decided to release it again because you didn't want, you know, anybody to lose it? Yeah, I mean, we didn't I, we didn't have a chance to really tour it. We're not really a band that's uh, historically on the radio or what. And we, you know, we basically bring, you know, bring the music to the people and, and we weren't able to do that during during the pandemic. So this, I mean, this tour has been two years in the waiting and in the making yeah. um, from its original time. Um, but yeah, we wanted to kind of give it a give it another go and give it another chance because I think it's a beautiful album. And um, to kind of throw a couple extra bonus tracks on there, which are a few stripped down versions of some of the songs with just me and Shooter Jennings. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I think it, it needs its due, its its own life, uh, and be able to kind of support it with with some live shows. Um, so we decided to do a new new version. And about Shooter Jennings, actually, which is the producer of the record and also played on one of the bonus songs, if I'm correct. Uh, how how essential has you know his role been this time? Yeah, I mean, with the bonus tracks, it's he plays on all of them. Well, there's three there's okay. tracks, and three of them he um, he plays on, and the other one was a release that I'd done earlier uh, in 2020 as well, but it never kind of ended up on anything a phys anything physical. So it's mm -hmm. the first physical release of that as well. Um, yeah, I mean, the shooter was instrumental. I mean, he was. Uh, one, just his vibe, his kind of casual uh, approach to producing um, was was super important to the album. And then just his playing. I mean, it was basically just myself, my band, and him in the room yeah. recording things live. And um, it, it's kind of the most organic and easiest album I've ever made, probably. Uh, but yeah, Shooter's, Shooter's a good friend and um, yeah, just a kind of a beautiful spirit. He really fills you up uh, with um, confidence, you know, uh, uh -huh. which which is good. It's a good, uh, you know, a good attribute to have. <laughs> sure. And um, in what sense is water, you know, the central element in the inspiration of this album and in the title as well? Yeah, I, I initially um, I was going to do more of a concept album where there would be a narrative that was throughout. Um, but then other songs kind of just started coming in that weren't necessarily as tied to the to okay. the ender idea of the widow's walk. Yeah. Um, but there's a couple songs. So like on the widow's walk and, and then there's a song called Sycamore that were based in that concept. Yeah. Uh, kind of. Uh, I mean, the Widow's Walk is is a thing on the, it's more on the East Coast of, of the United States where there's these perches up on top of homes um, in seaports. And so when the husband or significant other goes out to fish or sail or whale or do whatever they do, often the, 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 the woman um, would go and pace on, on the Widow's Walk, which is kind of a deck, like a rooftop deck kind yeah. of thing and long and wait for her husband to return. And often he would not because it's a dangerous uh, 
pretty dangerous way of life. Uh, and so I just thought there was a lot of drama and, and uh, you know, there's a love story. It could be a love story. I just thought there was other stuff. But then all these other songs started coming in and I, but the water theme kept kind of seeping in and the longing, um, but you know, then I threw some murder in there and things that I do like that. So <laughs> it wasn't as tight as I was hoping, but it still kind of works as a as a, there's a, a loose, very loose theme throughout. You know. Yeah. Where are you at right now? Already on tour, or you no, at no, home? Still home. So this oh, is gonna be first first shows. I'm in California. Okay. Uh, just I'm in the Valley of Los Angeles. Uh huh. Um, so. But yeah, this is going to be the first tour we've done in a long time. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, and it will be, I guess, very different this time. You know, let's see. It's all new, you know, because we will see how the people will react and uh, um, which are your expectations on this next tour? Did, did yeah. you think about it? You know, the fact that maybe there won't be any meet and greet this time. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't really do that anyway. So. <laughs> um, yeah, it's um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm hoping things are closer to normal than they have been in a long time. It seems like things are opening up and people are, um, you know, the fear has lapsed a little bit. So I, I, I'm hoping that, you know, we can get that kind of cycle of energy that goes from performer to crowd to back to the performer um that's really my hope i mean i'm kind of i'm excited but then kind of anxious and nervous about it as well in in a in a way but I, i'll be back you define um your music uh as sort of melting pot of folk blues rock americana and alternative country but all together it's called cow punk where this definition come from? It, it was it your idea? Because I read it, you know, uh, on the, on the web, and so I was very curious about it because it's it's very particular. So, yeah, but, so I must ask, you know, that. So it's not. <laughs> I wouldn't categorize it as cowpunk. I mean, cowpunk <laughs> is a very specific mm -hmm. kind of American country fast thing that that's we have some aspects of that uh, okay but yeah I, I mean i don't i try to be pretty genreless you know I, I i like i just whatever comes out comes out and if it's a if it's more of a folk song it is what it is if it's more of a country song it is that if it's a rock song or more of an aggressive uh you know more punk or you know that's what it is i never i don't want to be in the genre you know, okay. I want, I, I, hopefully, you know, the goal as a musician is kind of to have your own sound. And what that is, um, when people can uh, connect with it in a singular way, that I think that's really the kind of the, the mountaintop of, of what you're doing is for somebody to listen to something and go like, oh, that's the white buffalo. Yeah. Is, is kind of the goal. I mean, just like you'd be like, oh, that's Creedence. So that's. Bruce Springsteen, or that's you know, you people have sounds that they've created, um, not that they're genres amongst themselves, but uh, I feel like that's that's the goal is to to be your own thing, you know, with honesty. Your voice is very particular, and you've been defined one of you know the best and warmest voices in america at the moment so oh, yeah. uh, how do you feel about that <laughs> i don't know i don't think about it it's just dumb luck you know mm -hmm. uh yeah i don't i don't know I, I i don't i don't really work on it much it's just <laughs> as a result of i don't know just being a big person or something i'm not sure why I, you know i it's just luck i don't know okay it's, uh, yeah and um, do you think that country music has lost its original sense, you know, original meaning, traditional roots in the last, let's say, 20 years? Are you, in a sense, on a mission, you know, to bring it back to where it belongs? Um, is it like a kind of job for you or is a sort of catharsis for the whole gen genre? Yeah, I mean... <laughs> 
I, I don't feel like I'm part of that country music genre culture, you know? I mean, there's splashes of it in my music, but it's not, um, I wouldn't consider myself a country artist, you know? I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. country music has, I don't want to say failed us uh, of late. I mean, there's some people that have come up in the, in the, in recent years, you know, with Sturgill Simpson and, you know, Chris Stapleton and people that are kind of bringing back some of that, the heart of of country music, but it fell off for, it, you know, became more pop than pop, mm. you know? I mean, once you start rapping in country songs, you kind of jump the shark. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I, yeah I think, um, but yeah, I'm not trying to be a, the savior of country music or anything. I, I'm just, I just do what I do. And that's, that's, that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to me, you sound like, you know, Bob Dylan um, meets the Eagles, meets Clash sometimes. So it's like, you uh, know. That's all good. <laughs> all right. And um, your constant companion is your Taylor acoustic guitar even on stage and with the full band, you always play an acoustic guitar. Um, no electric guitar, as far as I'm concerned. Such a stark choice. Is there a specific reason behind it? It's more like, you know, for a songwriter, uh, like, you know, better to play acoustic or it's just a choice that you had because of your kind of music. Yeah, I don't, I mean, it's what I'm really comfortable with. And it's, uh, you know, the way I play acoustic guitar, I think is fairly unique to myself. It's kind of a primitive uh, bashing of it. <laughs> so I, I definitely have a, a, a more aggressive uh, approach to, to playing that. But I mean, there's, but there's all, I mean, granted, there's ballads and stuff like that where I'm, I'll do some finger picking. But, um, yeah, it's always been the vehicle. I mean, it's how I write the majority of the songs. I've been writing some on piano now, which I don't know anything about, which is kind of beautiful um, because I, I don't have, you get in little ruts or, or uh, you get trapped in little traps sometimes with your my guitar skills. Uh -huh. What chord you're gonna go to, but the piano has kind of opened up a whole new palette that's um that i don't know what i'm doing so it's it's all melody driven and so i can find it you know but i uh i don't know what the chord is until i'll have to go back and figure it out you know but um yeah so not not that things are changing but um you know definitely we recorded another album that that i think will come out this year um that's definitely way more experimental and less acoustic or organic than anything we've ever done by a landslide so um i'm excited about that and is that already finished the album's finished but we're still doing all the artwork and all that stuff but yeah it's it's finished okay so you have time okay <laughs> okay so it's gonna come out end of the year something I, like that or maybe I, next year I, I i'm hoping this year okay so yeah and how much of the white buffalo is reflected in Jake Smith and vice versa? You know, how much of Jake Smith comes in the white buffalo? And which of the two actually always wins? I mean, they're kind of the same thing, you know? I mean, it's the, the white buffalo moniker is, is kind of just that, you know? I wanted something with a little more mystery and a little something that could be take different shapes as far as uh, musical stuff, as far as how, how, what we do on stage. Um, but yeah, I, I, I often think a lot of the songs are kind of sheer fantasy or imagined, but, and then after I'll listen to them, I'll be like, oh man, that's 80% <laughs> you, you know? I, I think it's hard to separate. I mean, other than like, you know, some of the really dark, murder songs or some of the ones that are based to kind of in, in pure fantasy or, or uh, non-fiction. Um, but even in those, there's often at least my thoughts and the way my mind works uh, a, 
a lot of them have are are when I want to say autobiographical, but are have a lot of me in, in them for sure. So why not coming out with your own name? Why you, and why do I Buffalo? I don't know. I mean that that's just been <laughs> my name forever, you know? I mean that's <laughs> I've been that for 20 years or plus. And uh I don't it would be like not starting over, but it would just be pointless. I mean it's essentially me writing all the songs um and then the band is you know been i mean i've had my drummer for 15 20, you know 17 years maybe bass player's been with us for like six now um so i don't know it, it would oh. be it would be confusing i think <laughs> okay um so darkness shadows gray blacks and some melancholy However, your songs deliver also a sense of desire and very concrete emotions. Like Problem Sh Solution, the song that we uh, just heard, uh, is a prime example of that. Problem and Solution. Do you consider yourself more like a dreamer or just, you know, a man who observes the world with you know your feet on the ground you live fantasies or more reality how do you figure yourself as a songwriter um i mean some are based in fantasy and some are based in in reality i i mean i think you have to have realism um in order to to like hit people in the heart and to make them feel things it can't be based in this fantasy world um I, 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 anything that I write, I want to try to to get a reaction, either make you think or make you feel something. Um, and I think basing those in very human stories, um, but then at the same time, those human stories have much grander ideas and themes within them and around them, but making it a small story with kind of these universal ideas or thoughts or themes that people can relate to and attach them to their lives and their hearts and their minds. And um, that's really what, but yeah, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a dreamer. I live in today. Okay. <laughs> <That's my>, uh, <laughs> and you also uh, work on soundtracks a lot. Sons of Anarchy is an example of it. Is it a world apart for you? Uh, which you approach maybe on commission, or is your music that is already cinematic in a sense, in its own right, and, uh, uh, you know, as you are a storyteller by nature and you've been actually contacted because of that? Yeah, a lot of, a lot of the songs that have been used in, the, in TV shows and films and stuff are, have been ones that I've composed before, that I've mm. written prior to that they'll just pick up and use uh, the relationship with the sons of anarchy thing kind of expanded into them having me come in and sing on things and we did some cover songs uh, and some collaborations um, and those I wasn't involved in as much musically because mm -hmm. was, music was there and they I would just come in and sing or um, I mean come join the murder we did you know, I, I, me and the music supervisor came up with the music and the melody, but the the creator of that show actually wrote the words. So that okay. was a very collaborative thing. But um, yeah, I mean, a lot of them, I, I, after the fact, I'll go like, oh, that could, that could work in that show or that, you know, but I've never, I always let, let just let songs breathe and, and be what they're going to be. And, and, and oftentimes they're, uh, can be used in, in, in shows, which is, I mean, that's been a blessing. That's been more of a blessing than almost anything because it's it's helped build my fan base and spread the word on, on me and the band uh, more than anything. Sure, that's a, a great exposition. But uh, do you have a say, I mean, when they propose things to you or even, you know, choosing covers and those songs some of those songs do you also play live when you go on tour or not we um i don't know i don't have a say in it i mean i can say no you know okay but uh okay. yeah i mean when they did uh 
for Sons of Anarchy they did when they did Bohemian Rhapsody. Mm-hmm. I was like, I don't know about this one. <laughs> like that seems very lofty. Um, but yeah, no, we don't. I mean, we'll play "Come Join the Murder" and all the songs that I've written um, live. I think we might. I don't know if we're going to do "House of the Rising Sun" or that version of it. Uh, okay. It, I'm considering that, but yeah, we often don't 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 do the cover songs. I'm pretty proud of what I the catalog that I've created. So there's often not a whole lot of space for all the other stuff, you know. But um, I don't know. Did I answer? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sure, you did. Okay, about the YouTube series in the garage, which was self-filmed in your garage. Um, is that your nest, in a sense, the place where you create actually your music and write your lyrics? Uh, yeah, I mean, for years, as long as I've been in the garage kind of game or had a garage, uh, it's always been a little sanctuary, you know, where I could go and have some... Uh, you know, quiet and and alone, and I, okay. you know, I've got <laughs> grit, and uh, you know, it's not the most lavish situation. It, it's uh, yeah, it's always been a place where I could escape and and really kind of lose myself in in whatever I'm doing. You know, I mean, for me, the silence is uh, where almost all inspiration comes from. It's just from opening myself up to 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 things coming in that I don't almost feel like I have no control over. And is anybody allowed in there? Yeah. <laughs> sure. I got to play darts with somebody, you know? I mean, okay. yeah. You know, <laughs> I, I mean, not when I'm writing and doing that. Yeah, there's not. Yeah. If my son comes in, he can, he's welcome to come on in if he wants. But yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, why we should not miss at all your concert in Milan on May 2nd. Give us an invitation, you know, to all the listeners of Linear Rock, why they should come, you know, and buy the ticket right over after this interview. <laughs> no, they shouldn't come. They should just stay home, you know? I mean, why would you <laughs> go out? Why would you want to go out and feel your emotions and feel your feelings? And, and yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I'm not good at that kind of thing. But yeah, I mean, it, I want to take you on some kind of an emotional roller coaster where there's joy, there's sadness. I mean, the idea that you see people crying at some point and then you'll see just kind of unadulterated excitement or joy um, within the space of an hour and 15 minutes or hour and a half. Um, yeah, it's magic. I mean, that's it's a really, uh, you know, and we don't. We, we go for it, you know? I mean, every night we pour it out and, um, you know, there's not a lot of flash, you know? It, it's it's just basically us playing songs and, and feeling uh, our feelings. And hopefully that's that's uh, being absorbed by, by the people. And, and um, yeah, I don't know. Man, I'm not, I, I, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a good pitch. <laughs> And is traveling for you more like an escape, uh, you know, not to be caught in a trap as the white buffalo, or it's like an exploration of the world in constant, you know, search of new inspiration? Yeah, I mean, touring, you know, I mean, just the nature of the job, it allows you to see different cultures, see different ways of life, see different religions, different colors. You know, there's so much that goes along with with traveling um, and connecting with with people. Um, I don't really think of it as a, I mean, it's my job, you know, that's what I do. So, I, I, but I know that it has been, it, it, one, it's a blessing and it's a, um, it allows my mind to stay open and, and, you know, childlike almost <laughs> as even as an older man now uh that it yeah it's it, it it feeds itself um and feeds the soul kind of in the mind like in a way that almost nothing can do i mean to go from you know italy to spain to turkey to you know from from the uk or whatever is is you seeing stuff in so many different cultures 
food and languages and um, architecture. I mean, there's just so much going on. Yeah. It's almost hard and it's so, but it's so fast, you know? And then you do the same show every night, not the same show, but a similar show every night, but the crowd can be di different. It's amazing how you can really uh, feel and get a sense of, of culture um, and community playing live. I mean, you could do essentially the same show in the Netherlands, which is kind of a quieter, more reserved people. And then you can go to Spain or Italy and people are, you know, going completely wild. Um, but there, I, I don't know, I've noticed at least that you could see the culture and the community and how the people are uh, in those places. It, it's just, a, I think it's a unique perspective to be able to to do that and feel that and and see that unfold within shows. But then also, we you know, we get out and about and mix it up with uh, at at bars and whatnot as <laughs> well. <laughs> How long have you been doing this as you know your how long music has been your your life? I don't want to say your job, but uh, since yeah. you are a complete artist, but um, and did you ever think you know what would you do today if you were not a musician or let's say an artisan of music that's how i like to call you oh that's nice um <laughs> i have no idea what i'd be doing you know i mean i would think i would probably be doing something artistic or creative um i don't know whether it would be writing books or doing something i, don't, I can't imagine myself having a regular job but um yeah, it's super lucky. I mean, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I've been doing it for, I don't know, 20, night, 20 years, 25 years, you know, probably solely as my, the only thing I do for, yeah, at least probably 20 years. So you mean that also when you are at home, music is like your main commitment during the day? I mean, there's <laughs> always music in your day or no. how's a nor normal day at home for uh, Jake Smith? <laughs> it's not. Uh, no, I, I mean, I, <laughs> I don't spend <laughs> much time at it. Actually, <laughs> I'm like, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 get, I get these lucky waves that come in and I'll write a, a lot in a very short period of time. Mm. And a lot of my days are filled with leisure and, and lounging and trying to occupy myself with kind of mundane things. But at the same time, and I just allow songs to come when they come and I often don't force them, but okay. I do force them when I have, I almost need a deadline. Yeah, somebody has to tell me like, okay, we're doing an album at this time. And, and then that often out of desperation uh i don't know fills up my artistic the well or whatever and it, it, you know, they'll come out because it has to um but yeah i lack focus <laughs> okay <laughs> and which is the other big passion you have apart from music um i mean i love i, I mean i love all kinds of stuff i love you know sports and stuff i mean i love watching baseball i like playing tennis and golf and surfing and um those kind of active things uh i i like just going out and and hanging out with people and um food cooking uh is a passion i guess i mean a lot of things i yeah, have a, a lot of large palette of other things i enjoy doing that aren't musically inclined Great. Okay, so Jake, thanks for your time. We cannot wait to see you uh, back on stage in Italy. That will be one of the first, you know, shows overseas, basically, more or less, uh, here in Italy for us. So we're really looking forward to it. And uh, uh, I will be there. And thanks very much for your time. My so pleasure. You so I'm see you very very uh, soon <laughs> okay okay so we're closing this interview with the drifter so do you want to introduce it for us um yeah this is a song that the drifter is this the new version or the the, the new version yes yeah so this is just me playing guitar and singing and shooter jennings on piano it's one take 
So this is wow. This is what it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I mean, it's a, the Drifter is a song kind of about a, a a man that's made some bad decisions in his life and and maybe not been the best uh, family man and chose kind of debauchery and uh, you know the bottle instead of you know doing right by and, and he's kind of drifting through life okay but, I guess, yeah grazie Jake see you very very soon thank you the white buffalo ladies and gentlemen the drifter ciao Jake grazie bye -bye. thank you bye bye, bye. ciao